Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that a weather balloon has crash landed in your area. Please do not be alarmed. The government is taking care of this. We are cleaning up any debris from this weather balloon. Please be advised that in the area there may be remnants of weather equipment. If you happen to find any weather equipment, please contact your local government officials and we will be by swiftly to pick it up. Thank you for your cooperation. In Naturally Disastrous, you are playing one of a, a group of aliens that have crash landed on Earth, unfortunately. And now what you have to do is you have to signal the mothership to come and pick you guys up before uh, tragedy falls or the Earth just gets too messed up to be even worth exploring any further. So, every player is going to choose an alien to be. So we have Chultex, uh, Matucular, Dr. Shimron, Victoria, Shalex, and Captain Copernicus. Once everybody has uh, picked their character, they're going to take their little standee and their character card and place it in front of them with their alien side up. They're also going to grab a little token here to mark on your wounds. And everybody starts off with zero wounds. So you're just going to place that little marker right onto the zero track. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to locate all of the little satellite tokens. Now these satellite tokens, there are four of them, and each one correspond to a corner of the board that you have randomly set up. So, number one here. Uh, in the end game, needs to go up to this top corner because this top corner is always going to have a number one in it. Then, of course, number three is going to have to go in the other corner, six over here, and then eight over there. If you manage to get all four of the satellites there, that would be the end of the game. And as long as all the aliens have survived, all the aliens have successfully won the game. So, to set that up is you're going to take these four tokens and you're going to grab 11 other of the other tokens randomly and you're going to go ahead and put them onto the board. So, let me flip these over and I will get 11 set up for you. Once you have your tokens selected, you're going to mix those all in together. And then you're going to take the D10 and the D8 and you're going to roll them to find out the location of each of these items without looking at them. So, for example, you're going to see uh, that is a 3, 1. And what I like is a red die, so you look at the red number. So you're going to go on tile 3, and the black uh, die represents the black number. So you're just going to go on 3, 1. So that token is going to go right there. And let's just place another one here. So we have 6, 3. So you locate number six, space number three, and you place that out. So you go ahead and place out all of the, the tokens according to how you roll. So however they go, they're just going to go spread out all over this board. Once those are out, you're going to go ahead and place all of the, the natives and the UFO. For the UFO's placement, is it's going to go onto tile 9 right here. And you're going to go ahead and roll the D8 and see where it goes. That's going to go into space number 1. The scientist goes into the middle of this laboratory title, tile. excuse me, And the uh, agent, the guard, and the sniper all go onto the vault space on tile number seven. Then you're going to go ahead and take your character. So let's just say I'm playing Captain Copernicus here. You're going to go ahead and roll both dice to see where you have crash landed. So eight, six. So I'm going right here onto that tile. 
And let's say that shall x is also with me. And shall x is going to go on to 1, 1. So let's find shall x's character here. I believe that's shall x. Yes, so 1, 1 is right there. Luckily, they're not too far away from me. So let's get their health markers on there. So each of the player boards give you a turn by turn of everything that you do on your turn when it is your turn. And what's nice is at the beginning of the aliens turns is you decide who's going to go first. So you can decide uh, the player order if you want to uh, change it up every round you can do so. Let's just say we decide that the captain needs to go first so Captain Copernicus Captain Copernicus, if I can talk here, is going to go ahead and take the first turn. So the first thing you do is a naturally disastrous action, which is right here, which is you're rolling the d10. So we're going to take the red d10, and we're going to give that a roll. And that is a number three. Now you can look up what these actions are in the book, or once you've kind of learned those, you can look at the tiles, and that's the tile it's going to activate. So tile number three we have right here in the middle of this game. And it says two times D8 with an earthquake, earthquake token. So number three is the earthquake tile. So you're going to go ahead and roll the D8 two times. So on tile number seven, we must put an earthquake. So that's going to go right there with that token there. And, oops, that's the wrong die. And we're going to roll again. And number six receives an earthquake token. So unfortunately with these tokens there, there are stuff there that we might need, but unfortunately there's an earthquake happening and you cannot move your characters into an earthquake space. And I will let you know how to get rid of those in just a second. So next, if you look at the card here, next we're going to do the native actions. So that will be the Sniper, the Secret Agent, and the Mad Scientist. So let's just go ahead and go in order. The Sniper is going to go ahead and try to shoot an alien that is up to two spaces away from him. Well, there are no aliens within two spaces of him, so now he's going to attempt to move towards the closest alien. Because when the Natives take their action. First, they're going to attempt to do their aggressive action. Then they're going to attempt to do their move action. And lastly, they'll attempt to do their native action. Or uh, their, their rest action, excuse me. If one of those happen, then you don't do any of their other things. So, he tried to shoot somebody. There's nobody to shoot. So now he's going to go ahead and he's going to move towards the nearest alien. Both aliens are right here. So I'm just going to say he's going to move over one, two spaces. And because he moved, he's not going to take the rest action. Next up is the secret agent. Well, the secret agent is trying to collect this alien tech that has all been strewn about the area. So the first thing he's going to do, if he is on a space with alien tech, he's going to airlift that right into the vault along with himself. Well, he is not on any pieces of alien tech. So what he's going to do, he's, he's, he's now going to move one space towards the closest discoverable item. So he's going to go right there and then he has a couple choices on his next movement turn where he's going to go but there's two items right there that are within his reach. So now the evil mad scientist is going to do. And she realized the sniper moved one too many spaces so he should actually move back because everybody uh, moves one space. So now the scientist is going to move one space. He's going to move right down here to space number seven on his tile. Um, you cannot move diagonally, so he wouldn't move onto there. And these are all the player's choices of where they go. We have a little bit of manipulation of kind of how everything moves along, but they have to move, move towards the closest uh, goal item of their, of their things. So that's all of the native actions. The uh, UFO does not take a native action turn, and neither does the guard. The guard is there to guard the vault, and you have to kill the, or knock out the guard to be able to get anything that is in that vault. So now you go on to your action phase. 
So in your action phase, you get to do three separate actions, or you can do the same one twice if you wanted to, but you get three total actions. So you can move up the two spaces. You can engage an enemy. Um, that is when you move into an enemy space, that means you've snuck up on them. So you're gonna get a plus three to your die. You can probe, which is if you are on an item, you can probe to flip it over and have a look at what that item is. You can pick up, drop, or trade items. So if you're on a space with an item, you can pick it up. You can always drop it. Or if you're on a space with another alien, you can go ahead and do a trade action. You can rest by healing up to one wound. So your wounds would, would heal up. Or if you wanted to, you could um, land or stand up a friendly unit. When you do the land action, it actually heals the land of some kind of disastrous thing. So we could heal up these earthquake uh, uh, tokens that are on there to try to see what those are and hopefully be able to move on to them in a later turn. There is also a special ability that each character has. So looking at Captain Copernicus, what he can do is once per turn, in addition to your normal action, you may assign a player other than yourself to take an immediate, uh, immediate free action. Shalex over here, Shalex's uh, special action is for an action, you may probe any one discoverable item token anywhere, but not in the vault. So Shalex can kind of peek around the board and see what's going on without actually being on those very specific tiles. So, uh, the captain here, we're going to have him take the first turn. The captain here does not want to be by this scientist because the scientist is trying to do bad and evil things to these poor you know, aliens here that, that crash landed here. They didn't mean to crash land onto our planet. But he's going to take a move action to go there. You can go up the two spaces. He's going to stop right on that that place right there because hey there's some stuff here that he might need to check out so then Captain Copernicus is going to take the probe action he's gonna flip that over and ooh boom that is one of these satellites that we need that is number three so now that he has found that piece he's gonna go ahead and pick up that item as his third action so you pick that up and you're gonna place that onto your card and each of the characters have three item spots, so they can carry up to three different things. So Captain Copernicus has now taken his turn. Now Shalex is going to take their turn. Now, at the beginning of their turn, of course, you have to do the naturally disastrous thing. So you're going to roll the d10 and see what you get. And that was a 2, so we're going to say it was a 2. So a two up here is the flood, unfortunately. So with that, you're going to roll the D8 twice and flood those tiles. So we're going to flood number six, and we're going to roll again, and we're going to flood number four, which is not good because there's a tile under that now. Now, if I did roll and I was supposed to, let's just say I rolled another six, then it's my choice I have to put it adjacent to the uh, to another uh, disaster tile that I already have out of that same type and I can put it anywhere including diagonally as long as it is adjacent so I could have put it at one two seven or even the middle two on there if I so desired but I did roll a different number so that's where that is going to go now the natives are going to take their actions so the secret agent over here is he's going to move right onto that tile there. The sniper is still going to be continuing on to us and the scientist is still sneaking up on poor Captain Copernicus. So Shalex is now going to take their turn and the first thing Shalex wants to do is Shalex is going to heal. They're going to take the heal action so they're going to heal the land. So Shalex is going to get rid of this earthquake token that happens to be right there. Now Shalex will take a move action, and Shalex is going to go ahead and probe this piece right here. Now this is one of the special things right here. This is an um, old atom bomb that unfortunately the Earthlings have forgotten to explode. So, let me look in the book to 
make sure I do this right. So, a lot of the cards, or a lot of the um, tokens and stuff, will, um, will talk about a queen's movement. So if you go back to uh, chess, a queen can move in a straight line in any direction. So a straight line in any direction from this tile, those are the, those are the things that are going to be affected. And according to the instructions, all characters within a queen's movement pattern immediately suffer one wound. So, we're going to go first over here to the left, and the scientist receives a wound. He doesn't have a card to receive wounds on, so that just means he gets knocked over. So then let's just go clockwise here. We're going to go in this direction. There is nobody within these tiles here, and nobody straight up. Over here, that is right in line with the secret agents and the guard, so unfortunately they get knocked down, actually fortunately for us since we're playing the aliens. And then there's nobody else in any of the other directions, but since you were in the middle of that, you're going to get knocked down, at, or you're going to get a wound, excuse me, not knocked down. So Shalix is going to move the wound tracker over on them. One thing, and you're going to go ahead and discard that tile. So Shalex now has one wound on her card. Now she has one more, well let me see here, heal, move, probe. That was all of her actions. She can take no more actions. She is done now for her turn. So now that everybody has acted, now we can decide who wants to take the first turn in the new round. So if Shalex wants to go first, we can have Shalex go ahead and take the first turn, or we can have Captain Copernicus do so however you want to. But you will continue the game until you manage to get all four of the satellite tokens to their appropriate corners. Now, let's just say on the uh, poor captain's turn, uh, he took the first turn and the scientist moved into his space. Well, if the scientist moves into your space, you're going to get one wound. So let's just say that Captain Copernicus had been knocked out when the scientist had moved into his space. Well, then the scientist would use some evil, evil stuff to poor Captain Copernicus. You flip over your thing and now you are mutated. You are now playing for a different team and you have a completely new goal. So as a mutated alien, you have much lower health. You can only carry one item. And your new goal is to pick up the technology and take it back to the vault. You are very, very similar to the secret agent. The secret agent, when they are on a tech and they are not knocked out, they're going to airlift that right into the vault. And if inside the vault there are more or equal to or more than half of the discoverable tokens on the board are in the vault, then the, uh, the natives have one in that aspect. If all the aliens are mutated, then the humans have also one in that aspect. If only a few of the aliens are mutated and the other aliens have been able to succeed and get all of the satellites where they needed to go, well, they have a, 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 a victory, but unfortunately, the Earth is just, it just has too much going on, and it's not worth saving, so they're just going to leave. Kind of sad that they couldn't, uh, you know, get with the humans and, and, and teach us their ways. But that is naturally disastrous. Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com. National Disastrous is a pretty cool game. I like how you have that variety of setup. Also, I didn't mention that um, when I had the game set up earlier in the, earlier in the video, I had um, the uh, desert side up. So this is the desert side of the tokens. But if you flip it over, there is a city side that has some alternate artwork on it. So there are some different looking tiles. That's the city side, and that'll be the desert side. So there's a little bit of uh, different art on the different sides. 
Um, you never know what's going to happen when you're rolling that naturally disastrous roll. I only showed you a few of them, the earthquake and the flood. There is also a volcano on the board that can spread lava around, and lava is impassable. So you have to kind of like make your way around that, and it's kind of good to use the lava to your advantage. That's what we were doing in, in our previous game. We were using the lava to kind of block off where the secret agent and the mad scientist could and could not go. So it was working for us. Um, there is a, su a super tornado that will suck everything right into it. So it kind of pulls and manipulates and does a lot of different things uh, in the game. I think this is a, a pretty cool little game. It doesn't take up a lot of space and it has a lot of variety of how it can be set up and, and where the tokens are and what tokens come out and everything. And when tokens are going into the vault, you start panicking because the fewer tokens you have on the board, the fewer tokens you need in the vault to lose the game. So you start off with 15 total tokens on the board, which would mean seven tokens, no, eight tokens would be inside the vault to cause a loss. But when you start getting down towards the end of the game, that number starts going down, 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 and down, and then three tokens in the vault is what loses you. The, the game was, is always not that good. You're always counting and seeing to figure out what you need to do. And um, a good strategy with that is you can drop stuff. So if you need to drop an item to add one more token out there, because if you see that secret agent is going to be grabbing something, you can try to manipulate that and start, you know, littering the land with stuff to hopefully get it so that way the vault doesn't cause you to lose the game. But this is a pretty cool game. I enjoyed playing it. Uh, there is an expansion out for it that is now out on Kickstarter. You can pick up the expansion along with the second printing of this game. I'll have links down below for it if you want to check that out. And thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and help support Cloak and Maple. On the next screen, you can go ahead and click that Patreon button to go ahead and donate to my Patreon account. There's also a subscribe button that you can click on to to go right over and subscribe to this channel. And Thanks for watching. Please click the Patreon button. It helps support this channel. Also, shirts are available at geekygoodies.com.